the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. Hey, what's up, and welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. This is the podcast where we talk about Tales from the Dark Side, the episodic anthology series from the 80s created by George Romero and Richard Rubenstein. Uh, yes, it is indeed. Yeah, I just want to reiterate that every time we jump in for those who are yeah, the uninitiated. We have to, just in yeah. case you don't know what we're talking about. Sure. It's yeah. Tales from the Dark Side. They, they, could, they could be coming in. This is their first episode. They maybe missed the first, you know, series of ones, you know, 10 or 12 that came before this. So it, it doesn't hurt. We only got a handful of the video ones up, so we got to keep making this sure. This is what, our True. third video? Yeah. Episode? I, I believe so, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. yeah, it's getting there. I'm still not used to uh, being... <laughs> here on video it's still getting uh getting your video legs yeah, i like being a dis uh, disembodied voice yeah it's a lot more forgiving yeah. <laughs> yeah today we're talking about anniversary dinner directed by james streisick and it was written by james houghton and dj pass and the original air date was february 3rd 1985 now these i've noticed it's like when you have a screenplay by or from a short story these are usually the better episodes have you noticed that I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. Like uh, again, what we've had so far, we've had Stephen King. Um, we've had. Have we had Bachman yet? Richard Bachman. No, I don't think so. Richard Bachman is Stephen King. Oh. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm no, like, I don't know. No, 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 Stephen no. Smith right now is watching and just like burying his head into the sand. I'm like, come on, guys. I meant to say Richard Matheson. Oh yeah, no, uh, yeah. no, we, we didn't have that one yet. Not yet. I, I know there's some Matheson in here too, and there was some somebody else, the guy who wrote Psycho, and it's just totally okay. fucking escaping me right now. I, anyway, oh Norman Bates, yeah, well, obviously yeah. Alfred yeah. Hitchcock, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hitchcock. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that fuck owes me fifty bucks. <laughs> And now I I don't want to tip my hand too much because I, I did like this episode. I'll, I'll just say that right away. But you said you mentioned, OK, all the ones that are based on short stories are are, are the good ones. I think Most this one's them. OK. Most of them. OK. Yeah. Not this one. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely there's an idea there and we're about to dissect it. Yeah, but we'll it, it, it just feels like this was really good on paper, but they couldn't make it 22 minutes without it being very like on the nose. Yeah. I Which think, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is. Well, we'll talk about that because that's 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 the only folly I think of this episode is that we've only got 22 minutes to tell the story, mm -hmm. and and remember with this series, not a whole lot of budget, not yeah. a whole lot of budget either. But they didn't really need it. No, this one in particular, there are no special effects. There's no there's no creature effects. There's no ghost effects. Yeah, and the location is just somebody's house. Yeah, right? literally. Yeah. Then, you know, they got a hot tub <laughs> for a living room. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's where the budget went. In yeah. the playroom. In the playroom. Yeah. <laughs> the pleasure dome. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm expecting the fucking creature to burst out of that uh, oh, water dude. from from uh, Terror Vision. Yeah, yeah. Spiro's there making fucking Uzo margaritas, maybe. Could be. He's got <laughs> that Greek salad on uh, on standby. <laughs> that homemade wine he's sipping down. Yeah. The sherry. Oh, yeah, the oh sherry. Oh, my God. Uh, again. Pro tip, we're going to get to it in a second. We mentioned this on the My Demon Lover episode last month, but if somebody hands you a drink and you don't know them, don't just say, okay, thank you. <laughs> and ain't going to end well. He's going to pass out now. <gasps> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's what I get for shutting my eyes on camera. Well, there you go. So we got Alice Ghostly and Mario Racuzo playing Eleanor and Henry Colander in this episode. Um... Ghost or what's her name? Alice Ghostly was in a bunch of stuff. I'm a moron. What? In the last episode, I said that that old woman was Grandmama in the Adam Family reunion. This is grandma. it. Was this fucking episode? <laughs> oh, this is what happens when you watch shit. some of these back to back, yeah. and there's just old people in both episodes. Yes, the the mother woman, whatever you want to call her, was actually Grandmama in Adam Family reunion. Oh. If you saw these episodes back to back, I'm sorry. I forgot. I screwed it up. 
But she's great. She's kind of my favorite part of this episode. Uh, Cause once you find out or figure out how, whatever comes first, what is actually happening? It's like, man, this is like perfect casting. Yeah. She's into kill a mockingbird and the uh, grease. And what else is she in? Oh, bewitched. She was in, she was in a yeah. bunch of like uh, uh 60s and 70s TV too. Yeah. Nothing usually really like, when we'll go through like the IMDb credits and stuff and try to figure out what these people have been in. Nothing really like, you know, there wasn't anything from like later on. It was all like, no. just a lot of, um, you know, old dramas and stuff. Yeah, no, no, like Twilight Zone yeah. hookups or anything like that or Alfred Hitchcock present stuff. I mean, she might be, but I don't I don't yeah. think so. What, what about Outer Limits? Is Outer Limits ever come into play here? <laughs> Sometimes. If, yeah, there's been a couple of Outer Limits okay. people. But what about Night Gallery? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So <laughs> so Mario Rakuzo, who plays Henry Collander, he's the fucking guy. He's the he's the plastic surgeon from Stepfather Three who rebuilds oh, Terry O'Quinn's okay. face. Okay, so he wasn't something. Yeah, well, yeah. he's just in the beginning to be like, hey, uh, we had Terry O'Quinn for the first and second movie, but we couldn't get him back. Yeah. So he's the plastic surgery yeah, so guy. So he's in that one. Yeah. I, I, so it stands. He wasn't really in anything. I have some ideas. Uh, maybe by June, as of your, if this, if you're watching this in 2022, uh, maybe that we could do with the. Uh, Step by the three. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Joe after this to maybe. Uh, I have some thoughts. It's. I, uh, we'll we'll return to that thought. Maybe. No, I want to cover Stepfather two before we even touch three yeah, or even yeah. think about it. Yeah. Same, yeah. same. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll reconvene after. Happy this. Stepfather's Day. Yeah. So it's Eleanor and Henry's twenty fifth anniversary, <laughs> the silver one of their wedding anniversary, right? Silver anniversary. It's silver. A big number. That's the one, Mav. That's the silver tuna. Um, <laughs> I love how they play up these roles, though, with these two lead characters. You have, was it Elaine? Is that what you just said? Eleanor. Eleanor. Mm -hmm. She's kind of that stereotypical, like, 50s home uh, maker wife mm -hmm. who's making dinner, just kind of putting up with the husband's, you know, remarks. And then the husband is that stereotypical, like, ball buster husband, acts like he's got it, you know, in the in the pits, but like an Archie Bunker type. But really, he loves his wife. and Yeah, grumpy when, all the time, like, hard to get along with. Yeah, one of those... Very stereotypical TV couple here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. But, but he has this, like, uh, you know, this, this fucking Jersey accent on him. Oh, it's thick. And he's like, oh, yeah, my, you fucking made me fucking walk around this house and do this and do that, Henry. Go, whatever. I love how he's like, he goes to grab, like, a utensil out of the uh, drawer and he cuts his finger. And he's like, oh, how many times have I told you not to put the knives in the <laughs> utensil drawer? Why the fuck would you put the knives backwards in there, you dumbass? What, do you got steak knives in there? Why are you sticking your hand in, like, a cat's paw? No, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you moron. 25 years of cutting myself on steak knives, you stupid bitch! Like, like, come on, man. Why, why would why would you put the knives in blade towards you? Or just go, yeah, dig it around, like, blind. That's what yeah, yeah. Yeah. Finger right in the knife that. drawer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a cat. <laughs> in there. So they're, so they're waxing about being together for 25 years and, and she's like, isn't that great? And he's like, yeah, it's a fish been hell. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, I, you know what, Henry? I miss the children on our anniversary. It's not, it's not as special without the children. Yeah. Like, so and that's kind of just keeps coming up through the episode. Did I mention that the children? The children. Yeah. <laughs> Did I mention I'm on Tales from the Dark Side? And I keep talking about this subject that would not be dark in any other show, but you're just sitting there as an audience member like, the children. She keeps mentioning these children. Well, I don't know. Something's not adding up. I don't know yet, but I'm like, my head's already like, hmm. The child. No, yeah, well. he, uh, so they... The way that it's written, though, especially at the beginning, it becomes more heavy handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the beginning, it sounds like their kids have grown up and, you know, moved yeah, away. Left the house. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's like, empty nest kind of thing. Yep. Um, oh, like right up until here, it's like very, um, it's like very innocent. Yeah. And like, like quaint. Yeah, yeah. Very quaint. Like and you cozy. think something is going to happen to them. Yeah. And maybe it will. Let's keep talking. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> you see outside as they're having their dinner, these two like people step forward, like into like their, their, their garden. And it cuts, and you're like, okay. Yeah, Almost it looks like, like it's a, going to like a home invasion sort of setup here, and it's like, oh no, the old people. The old people are going to yeah. get ransacked by some hoodlums. Right, like the beginning of Creep Show 2 kind of thing. Oh my yeah. God. Chief Poor George Wood Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Well, both of them really, but yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Ma Kettle gets it right in the fucking chest. That hair took him to Hollywood, dude. But no, we we instead cut to the morning, and, and, and Mom, let's call her, yeah. is on the porch, you know, knitting. And these uh, two people walk up. And you're like, okay, they just, a couple of hikers. All right, Joe, I see what you're doing here. And they, they're like, ah, yeah, you know where the Anderson house is? Uh, we can't find the Anderson house. And she's like, well, 
I think there's no one there right now. And I'm like, the guy. Okay. Yeah. And the guy Mark's being a real asshole. Yeah, and he's, he's like, like, we want to find out where it is. We don't want to sleep in your apple orchard again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, well, you could ask for it. She's like, why don't you fuck yourself, old lady? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, she, she, he says something like, yeah, we don't want to, you know, she's like, oh, I have chores if you yeah. want. And then we can, you know, accommodate you. And he's like, yeah, what? Slop out to the pigs? Sue <laughs> And then that that sets dad off. He comes out with, with the a fucking, shotgun. Yeah, the shotgun, the, hat, the, 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 the hunting hat on. Like, yeah, that's a lady you're talking there, son. He comes comes out and he's like, only these fucking things these bums understand is a couple fires a buckshot. I mean, if I was Mark, I would have fucking shut up real quick, too. I'm like, all right, not worth dying over. Brown brown stain, dude. Uh, Yeah. And and they walk away. But before they walk away, uh, the girlfriend who you find out is named Sybil. Sybil, yeah. uh, You kind of can tell is already has a bit of a connection because you get the vibe. She's sick of her boyfriend or whatever she he is to her. And these people are like, well, you know, there's always an open uh, door. You know, if you want to come back, hey, come on. Come on back, Sybil. Yeah, she's a little more sympathetic and nicer to the people than yeah. the boyfriend is. Yeah. She's also, it, it's also like, they they do that thing where it's obvious that like, she's the type, she, you know, she's like a Denny from My Demon Lover. <laughs> yeah. She lets people walk all over and she's obviously come from like a broken home and or a bad relationship yeah. and stuff like that. So she ends up like ditching her boyfriend. We, don't, we never find out what happens to Mark. He just fucks off. <laughs> um, Right out of the show. See ya. You're right. Yeah, he's just gone. He's just gone. I, she, yeah. she woke up in the apple orchard and, and he was gone. For, that's right. Yeah, he's just disappeared. <laughs> he's hanging out at the yeah. Anderson house. Not even killed or anything. That we, that we know of. Well, maybe. I mean, they talk about that butcher. The so- that he went to the Sawyer house. That's what house. I'm saying. They mention a butcher yeah. that did a lousy job cutting up some meat. I immediately thought of Leatherface. Leatherface with his chainsaw. Right. Yeah. Cutting Mark him up. The pigs. <laughs> Bubba, Bubba fucking doesn't know how to cut up uh, meat. Yeah, dude. he's not the best at that. Makes a good head cheese, though. True. He he is a one hitter in his own mind. In his own mind, Gramps is the, is the OG. Uh, yeah, as we learned in Leatherface, obviously, <laughs> 2017. But, you know, so then some time passes. Uh, you know what? You don't know if it's the next day or or later that day. Yeah. But you know, uh, Sybil comes back. She makes her way back to the house, and she's basically like, "Hey, she just moseys on in. It just walks right she's in. A, she's yeah. like, "Hey, Eleanor, you home? Mom, like, dad." <laughs> <laughs> well, because right, because because she keeps saying to her husband after they leave, "Oh, she looks so much like one of the children." Right? And he's like, "Yeah, I guess so. So sweet and young." But then they end up like she like hangs like bunks down with him. She's like, oh, you come in here. You lay down. Let's get you into the shower yeah. there. Little sweet thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You're my yeah. child now. <laughs> she is just like and I guess it is what you're saying where it's like she has a damaged uh, history because she talks about she ran away two years ago. She she has these abusive relationships. Yeah. Um, a, and, 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 you know, they're kind of gauging her, trying to figure out what her situation is. Right. So she becomes trusting, I think, because of that. Right. But as far as we know so far, yeah. they, they again, they got emptiness syndrome. She comes from like a bad uh, situation, situation from from a home life. They're kind of like a match. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like they're they're each fulfilling each other's weird <laughs> fantasy. And you still it's like these strangers the gonna go a certain <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. Like, where is it going to where's yeah. the twist? Where is it going to go weird? Is Sybil like a crazy maniac? Yeah. Did she kill her boyfriend? And now she's going to uh, prey upon these maybe, people? Maybe. Yeah, it was Leatherface. <laughs> the butcher. Uh, I mean, you got to remove your uh, your sense of disbelief or however the fuck that saying goes. There, there, there I go messing an idiot up. Sh- shocker. Suspend your that, disbelief. Yes, uh, because we were talking about this earlier and, and you were saying how before you watched it that you were like, oh, no, it's a couple weeks. She's there and we're watching. It's like now it's like a day or two. And I think part of that is just kind of, again, not to beat this dead horse, but it's a 22 minute show. You kind of have to keep the plot moving. You, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, to realistically have this relationship blossom, so it's like, yeah, sure. No, she totally. makes them; they get along. Why yeah, not? It's like, Fuck get it. to the point. We got to wrap this uh, up. Well, exactly. I, I had that weird Mandela effect before because I was like, I could have swore that you know it's a twenty-two minute show, but I thought they had like a passage of time. Yeah, one of those things where it's like, here she is, and then let's it's, it's like a sure, flash to the next chores. thing, and then she has like chores, yeah. and she's got like a new dress or whatever. Right. Like well, she's which, been there a while. They've done that on the show in the past, yeah. so I, I could see that. Yeah, and it, and then you know what? And then I realized I got. It mixed up with four-sided triangle. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, wait a second. 
That's what I'm thinking. Oh, that's yeah. an episode <laughs> coming up, I'm guessing? That's Tales from the Crypt. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> coming up many years from now, possibly. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get there. see. In the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they end up showing her, like, so she gets to know them a little bit more, and Henry comes home, he's like, look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> okay, you're living with us now, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, now he's in a ba- just a bad mood all the time. Yeah, yeah, but, but you see him, like, cool down a lot. Like, he gets pissed, and he's like, and he's like, okay, everything's fine, sweetheart. And, you, 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 yeah, you're fine. Yeah. And going through, like watching it this time for, to, you know, to get ready for the episode. Yeah. That's all. We didn't talk about his little like speech to her talking about like butchers mm. and like no, that's right. animals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now this is a right, like right around when I think. Actually, it, it comes episode, up right, right now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, right around here, he gives her a speech about like butchering animals and like how it is to kill for food. And that you don't want to kill animals while they're scared because the fear ruins the meat. Yeah, poisons it. Poisons it. That's and, what he, it and he said the fucking the 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 butcher has been like scaring his animals and killing them and like butchering them yeah, all. Yeah, ruining up. the meat. Yeah, and he's like, it's up, it's poison. Yeah. God damn it. He said, so like, you got to be real nice to the animals and you got to kiss them and love them and yeah. make them feel you safe. Meat. You get the good meat, you know. I, I, so you I get think them every fucking time good meat. that he's like gets annoyed and like raises raises his voice and like scares her. Yeah. He immediately backs down. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He's like, uh, oh, I didn't so mean sorry. it. Yeah, I didn't mean it. Yeah, have it's some right. of the, have some of this homemade don't sherry. Yeah. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. I mean, at that point, do you just get the elephant out of the room? We're, well, we're borderline there. Well, hold with, on. By, by wording that the I wanna, way you did. I wanna, <laughs> well, this is the fun part leading up to it. Well, I just want to cap that off with the fact that like this kind of solidifies the fact that she comes from abusive relationships yeah. and an abusive home life where she's so instantly forgiving of this guy for like lashing out at her. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, it's fine, whatever. I'm fine now. Yeah. Everything's cool. We're good. We're not going to yeah. talk about it. And this is also kind of the point in the episode where they really start laying it on thick to see. I, I, again, I'm guessing, obviously, but I'm guessing this is where they're like, let's see if people start figuring out what's really happening yeah. here. Haven't seen your family in two years, huh? Okay. Yeah. And it's like they have this hot tub and they keep mentioning, <laughs> oh, it's just like when we had the children. When we in had the children. Room. Yeah, in a hidden room. Remember when we put the children in our hidden room with a hot tub? <laughs> yeah. And we'd, I, we'd watch them play it's, in it. It's right off the uh right off the kitchen. Isn't well, it? that's the thing. There's yeah. a it, it's kind of like a shot of the pan of the beef cooking and it fades into the fucking jacuzzi, and then your brain's like, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. the giant cooking pot. Oh, no. Yeah, you kind of figured it out. By the way, it's like behind this panel door that they have to like, <laughs> it's like some fucking, I, like I don't Bruce know. Bruce Wayne. Yeah, it's like some yeah, Vincent like Price mansion shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, she presses it and it pops open. The playroom. <laughs> so, yeah, it's this this big fucking hot tub and, and they have this really good. Uh, 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 it's actually a beautiful hot tub. Like, I want to hang out yeah. in it. Right? <laughs> I, 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 I kind of love, though, how they do this scene because like she goes to get her bathing suit. And this is like the first crack you kind of see between the couple, you know, before they're, they're arguing, but it's all fun and games. Now it's like, oh, you better get your shit together because it won't turn on. And the wife who's been smiling like nobody's yeah. business the whole episode is just like, I thought you fixed that, Harold. It's just yeah. loose. It's just loose. Relax. I know what I'm doing. And he fucking kicks it oh, and it fires on. He Fonzarelli's this fucking yeah. giant human uh cooking pot but i'm sitting there like okay yeah all right these people were all smiles a minute ago something's off and then it, like i just kind of said it's it's a, it's a cooking pot it's a fucking cooking pot she she's like i'll go get my sibyl's like i'll get my suit on and he's like that's great she comes in she's like it's a little small and he's like <laughs> let's see that swimsuit yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's staring like, at her he's like oh, looks great on you kiddo hop in yeah and then uh they they kind of like mention this is just like the children again. They keep bringing the children up. And like you're saying, the idea is to put that in your head. They're just empty nest kind of thing. But I, with all that shit happening, I don't know. Maybe again, I'm just overthinking it because I know where this show takes things sure. all the time. But I'm like, OK, let's see if she figures it out. Uh, yeah. And she spoilers. She doesn't know <laughs> um, the layer. OK, so so. We just the cat's out of the bag. She's yeah. she's she's gonna be cooked by these people. Their anniversary dinner. Their anniversary Title, TM TM anniversary dinner TM. And <clears throat> like Chris was saying, they they don't want to scare her because it'll poison the meat. So they got to make it like perfect. But the layers of sadism here are really like like Sean. We were talking a little bit before this about how how you know in the beginning of the episode it's not that great. But like when you dissect how fucked up these people are and like. The idea of luring this this yeah. young woman like into their home and giving her this 
terrible false sense of security. Yeah, this broken woman. Yeah, there's all yeah. Co- there's so many levels of fucked up shit going on. I mean, they are serial killers. I, know. I mean, at the end of the day, like when you find out how many bodies they may have, yeah. uh, they're not you know prolific per se, but they're still killing people and eating them. They're methodic though. Yeah, the methodical. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, and, which like, lines and, up and patient. Yes, <laughs> which, which does line up if you've watched any show that has serial killers or read anything about. I mean, there's a million fucking shows, podcasts. And everything in between about this topic. So I'm sure if you're watching, it's like, yeah, that guy kind of lines up. Now that I'm thinking about it, like sitting here, I'm just like, man, it's like so fucked up. I, <laughs> I, I, I was kind of. I was just kind of thinking, especially with the new season coming out of Dexter, and I've been kind of going through it with my wife so I could watch the new season. I was just sitting there saying to her, I was like, we need a Dexter in this episode. We need Dexter to come in and lay out some fucking uh, <laughs> cannibal, punish- cannibal grandma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the the sweet couple that, you, that 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 you don't think anything of. Almost like you know the the witch in the gingerbread house kind of thing. I was gonna say that before. You're absolutely right. That's what it made and, me. Think and Dexter of. comes in and fucking sedates him. He's got him on the table. You know, <laughs> where would the Gil room be in the uh Sorry, in, in the me. would it be in the playroom? You think he has all the plastic up around the hot tub and the and everything and and the record player. Speaking of this record player, it's a Dexter crossover episode. Right? <laughs> of course, you know if you've if you've been paying attention to Movie Dumpster anytime I I'm on a show, I bring it into the episodes, and I'm sure Joe does it whether I realize it or not. Uh, it's just part of the fun. It's more clandestine. Yeah. Yes. But speaking of that record player, they they go out to get the groceries for the uh, anniversary dinner. And she's kind of left at her own devices. And that's where you get that speech that Chris was talking about earlier about, you know, well, things have to die so that we can live. And uh, well, they they go out. They're like, OK, yeah, we, we're going to go get the stuff for the anniversary dinner. But you just you just sleep in. OK, yeah. Get you, drunk on Sherry. Eat whatever, in the hot tub. <laughs> eat whatever you want and yeah. just sleep all day. Don't move a lot. OK, yeah. Don't, 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 don't be scared. Don't, be, yeah. don't be scared. We'll be back. <laughs> we know the hot tub's addicting, but try not to go in there while we're gone. She so she she ends up going to the room because I, I guess she needs another fucking soap. That's the first place she goes. Yeah. Is the hot tub room. Yeah. 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 Like she wakes up out of a stupor off the couch and is like, ah. and then she goes into the fucking tub again. Yeah. Well, first she turns on the fucking record. Well, player. that's yeah, that's where yeah. I was going. With this. And specifically, you have these like props on the uh, table for, for this. Oh, uh, yeah. For we, the video version. We zoom in on, on the on the big soup spoon. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. We get the giant soup spoon hanging on the wall. Another, it, another visual it's, cue. It's so much bigger than this one. Yeah. yeah. It, but yeah, you like like the setup that we have here. There's the, the, the giant knife, whatever kind that is. It's a machete. Like a curry knife. Yeah. Machete. What? It's the Bay of Blood machete. Oh, but they uh, they have weapons like that on the wall, like it in, in uh, like a formation, like a design. And yeah. Cue the Stelvio Cipriani, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But they have the door handles are in between them. And that's where the record player is. But there's a second one that has a key she can't get into. She's like finger in this hole. She's like, yeah, was oh. she Inspector Gadget? She going to fucking pop off the skin and open um, it up. I'm sorry. I'm calling her right now. This woman's like super slow. She's like a ah, keyhole. I think she's already drunk. You think so? <laughs> I don't know. She's oh no! In. She just woke up. She's not drunk. She's yet. just groggy. She's yeah. like a keyhole. She's got a ha- she's got a hangover. She's been hitting that stuff so hard, it's like still in her system. Yeah. They could have slipped her some stuff. No, they don't. They want to keep their meat pure. True. Yeah. Now they're se- now they're going to season her up. Well, first they got to yell at her for fucking with the record oh, player. God. Harry flips out, and then kind of like what Chris was saying, I think he realizes, all right, I got to bring this back down to zero. Yeah. They come back home while she's messing around with the, you know. Their, their fucking kill their ritual stereo. room. Yeah. 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 Mess around. He comes storming in, screams at her. She gets all scared. And what? A minute later. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to frighten you. It's, a, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> here's here's some home. Scared. Here's some homemade sherry. Yeah. Sits her down at the table, gives drink, her a sip of sherry. Drink that up, kiddo. Yeah. She's like, this is delicious. Yeah. And then they just keep feeding this to her. They get her. She gets fucking schnockered in like 0.5 seconds. And like, I, I know people drink and go in hot tubs. Obviously, it's you know not that uncommon. But it, they it do. also makes sense. Like yeah. you were talking about this before too. Uh, people do it, but they don't recommend it because you'll just. If you get knocked out from it, you're fucked. You're dead. Let's put, no a, uh, let's put a disclaimer here. Don't drink sherry and go in a hot tub. Don't drink you a heard whole- it here first. <laughs> a whole, a whole uh, uh, handle of we it. We cannot be held liable for <laughs> yeah. uh, any don't, hot tub sherry accidents. Don't drink a bottle of sherry and get into an old person's giant cook tub. Yeah. yeah do it. Bad idea. Because we, we slam cut to her in the fucking tub, like half asleep, drunk. A- and like- the fucking wife comes in with this like basket of uh, like broccoli and oh. lettuce and, and onions and stuff. She's got and she's still talking to her like casually. 
She's like, yeah. oh, honey, we're getting all ready. She's like, oh, I brought, I brought you some snacks. I brought you some something yeah. to nibble yeah. on. Yeah. She's like carrots into the hot tub. Yeah, yeah, eating the fucking bathtub broccoli. And she's laughing. Right. Yeah, I brought like, some snacks for you. Yeah. <laughs> Just like carrots go with the yeah. sherry. She's like, this is hilarious. I, I love the husband comes in with this big cask of wine <laughs> and just sets it down. <laughs> How you doing, kiddo? You feeling okay yeah. in there? I'm great. She still has no idea what's going on. No, no clue. This woman's throwing food in this hot room. She's like, all right. She comes in with a blanket full of it. She's like, here's yeah. a little more. Whoop. There's 10 pounds of vegetables. And, she, and, and she's just like cracking up, too. Yeah. She's like, this is hilarious. Next thing you know, the booze takes hold. The temperature rises and she passes the fuck out and slips right into that uh, fucking boiling yeah. water. Oh, it's time for the sherry. Dumps it the whole casket. Uh, she gets the big ladle out and, and has him sip some of it. <laughs> Is it soup yet? They're like mixing. The yeah, this <laughs> gigantic, comically large <laughs> ladle. Up. Yeah. This like, fucking spoon head is like this big. It looks like the hocus pocus spoon. Yeah, or something like the stinging witches would be using. Oh or yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, we see this body floating in there, and he he takes a little sip of it, and uh, just like when they had the kids around, isn't it great to have the kids with you during your anniversary, uh, guys? The kid, it's so nice to have a kid with us again. What did she for, say? It's like, oh, it's nice to have the chi- yeah, nice to have the children back. For, it's nice to have the children for dinner. <laughs> open up the locked cabinet. It's these fucking six or eight skulls. <laughs> all the skulls. Just lines of skulls. Yeah. That's, that's the only effect credits. really in the movie yeah. or oh, a- episode. Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Those were laying in a prop closet somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one in the bottom. What is it? The, the bottom middle. It doesn't even look like the eye sockets are like empty. But I remember it looking weird, like going through the episodes. Like, what, what happened with that one? <laughs> oh, we Dropped left out the, of the modal early. We, we left the eyes in that one. Yeah. We didn't make head cheese out of that yeah. one. It, it's kind of great. I don't know. Like, that again, we said it literally in the episode, but like the first half, obviously, you don't know what's happening. So you're kind of like, all right, wh- where the fuck is this going? And then once like you figure it out or or you, maybe you don't figure it out, maybe you just see that ending and, and it all comes together. Then I think it really works. But it does take a bit to get going, which, again, is kind of the point. Um, I thought it was a good one, though. Overall, what do you what, what do you guys think? I think I think it's good. It, it's one of those ones you got to watch a couple times. Because once you, once you know what's coming and you get in the groove, of it, then you can start to notice like a little more things, and then kind of because it's in such a short time frame, mm-hmm. it, we're fucking going through yeah this. rapid pace. But if you watch it a couple times or have watched it a couple times over the years, then you start to like see little details and kind of pick apart the psychology a little bit more. And I think it, I think overall, it becomes more it just like a fine wine. It yeah, gets fine better with age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, it's like it's not. Like, I hardly remember this one going through it. It's like, it's fine. It's a decent episode. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a middle of the road episode. I always remember Sybil because she's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. I think it's a good way to do like a cannibal story, like, like making them kind of For like TV. Yeah. yeah. Especially like the stereotype of what, you know, we call them boomers now, but what people that age were, especially in that time period, really like playing into that. And I just think it, it, if you don't pick up on it, it totally, you know, circumvents what you're expecting. Uh, and even if you do kind of figure it out like I did, and it seems like you guys did. Me, me, I don't know if you did when you first saw it, but. Not, I, not necessarily. And only upon this viewing was, d- d- again, like I said, like I saw the psychology that was happening, whether it's really there or just me just putting it on top of this or yeah. overlaying it on top of it. Uh, it makes sense in my head. Yeah. And um, I was kind of i was actually a little bit more impressed this this go around because i was like oh it's very subtle in how it tells mm. Sybil's story and and even their uh the the the, the colander story as well yeah like sean said it is a good way to tell a cannibal story in a tv sense yeah and it's like yeah if it does, does take a little bit to get going it does play with your expectations a little bit mm-hmm. because it's like having an elderly couple like mm-hmm. on a horror series you just think they're going to be the ones to get something you have, know, have yeah. something bad happen yeah. to them. I mean, it does have that double-edged sort of effect now. Yeah. Maybe in the 80s, this was less prominent, but of like, yes, but also the second thing that comes to mind is they're the bad guys. Yeah. Well, Just because that's been beaten to death over the last 40 yeah. years. I think that might be it too. Yeah. yeah and it, it, I mean, anytime when we go back to these old shows, at least from my perspective, because I'm not as familiar with as much of this stuff as you and Chris are, uh, where I'm just like, huh, I, I think I even mentioned this on one of our episodes recently that it's like, I wonder when people saw this, like when it was airing, which, which I think we actually were talking about a little bit in the last episode, yeah. like the reaction, like how relatable was this? Like, I think it holds up really well, but I'm just, I think about that. Like, would that have hit home harder? Would people have figured it out? 
you know, I'm coming at this from 2022, many, many years later. So I just weird thing to think about. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, it does unravel as the episode goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like from what no matter what you or when you figure it out, the episode, it's like the more you go into it, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes it comes together again, the more the more that you watch it, because again. I've already said everything I have to say. About <laughs> yes. I'm not going to But it's like, you know, myself. you kind of, um, no, you hit it perfectly, though. It's like, yeah, it's a good episode. Yeah. yeah. Good time. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't want any of that soup. I'll take the broccoli. It looked pretty, uh, <laughs> bathtub pretty damn good. Bathtub broccoli? You're well, I'll take, I'll take it before the bathtub. I don't need anybody's bathtub water. I'm going to, I want some of that sherry, man. Take some of that Cheryl water. Take some of that oh, Cheryl God. water. <laughs> yeah, sell it on eBay. Put on, put on one of them small fucking b bikinis <laughs> and hop on in. <laughs> On twitch.tv slash movie dumpster. We're going to jump in the hot tub? I, That's a thing on Twitch. Maybe it won't be for 30-year-old for, for yeah, men. Grab your giant spoon. We're jumping in the yeah, hot tub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be like fucking Kramer in that one episode of Seinfeld where he's like bathing in butter. Just put me out there. Cover me in butter. Oh. You know, you know, spin me around in the pot. <laughs> I don't know. Turn me into a human. Turn me into a Sean uh, chicken finger. <laughs> a, a Sean mozzarella know, stick. There's a the, thumbnail on, for the episode. There, yeah, there you go. <laughs> the chicken finger with Sean's face on it. <laughs> That's pretty much all there is to say, I think. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's, you know, we all, it's pretty it's good. good episode. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's good with a capital G. But yeah, so, so that's it. And until next time, I'm Joe LaScola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. I love having the children for dinner. Tales from the Dark Side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us. <laughs>